Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. Guys, good evening, good evening. How are you doing? How are you doing on this gorgeous Monday? It has been an incredible day already, and we have lots in store for you. Tell me how you are for those of you who are logging in. Do not forget to put your comments on the thread and be totally interactive. We are having a dialogue, not a monologue. Yes, we want dialogue today. We've got, I've got some amazing guests in the studio today. And yes, we're doing it from home and we're doing our thing. And I am just making some adjustments because we have some sunshine coming through the window. And it doesn't normally do that. So just bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Let me see if that makes a difference to the recording. No, it doesn't. So if I turn you that way. Okay, so we're going to do it this way. I've got a line. I don't know what that's about, but here we go. This is Conversations with your girl, Yvonne Michelle. We're live and direct on Luton Urban Radio. So those of you who are on the www. welcome, welcome, welcome. Those of you who are streaming through our Facebook feed, good evening, good evening, good evening. Those of you who are on YouTube, hello, hello, hello. Yes, 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 we are, we are doing it. We are doing it in all different ways. It's called triating and see if it works. And if it works, that's all good. So guys, get yourself a cup of tea, get yourself a biscuit, get yourself comfortable because we've got two powerhouse women for you tonight. If you thought last week was amazing, this week is going to just throw you right down. You're going to end up on your back flat out and be like, Lord of mercy. These women are absolutely superb. They are the creme de la creme. And so I want you to get yourselves comfortable. But in the meantime, let me just welcome you. Let me just let you know what's going on. There's been so much going on in this season. Things change from day to day. So as you know, I was doing a TV show called The Love Zone with um, an, another co-host. And we have decided to go our separate ways and do our things differently because, you know, we, we had different ideas for the show. And so the good news is, is that Media Net Live have offered me my own show. That is the creme de la creme. And we wish Ace all the best in his endeavours and what he uh, pursues next. So I will be still be doing the relationship show. Oh, yes, 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 relationships. It's all about that. So do remember to tune in tomorrow to After Dark, which starts at 10 p.m. till midnight. This is a big people show where we talk real relationships. We go behind the black curtain and we start to unpick and unravel what relationships are all about. For those of you who are single, please do join. I do believe we've got some new men coming in tomorrow. So if you want to find yourself a young man, you'll be on the show. All right, all right, all right. So yeah, so that's what's going on with me. Don't forget, uh, first thing on a Monday, first thing on a Monday, first thing on a Tuesday, first thing throughout the week, we have morning inspiration with me. I'm here at nine o'clock every morning for maybe 10 to 15 minutes with a burst of inspiration, motivation and empowerment for you to kickstart your day. It'll make you think, get that mind ticking, get that mindset in alignment with where you want to go so you can actually reach that destination. So that's what's going on with me. Do not forget tomorrow, um, outside Debenhams in Luton, we have, I think they're called TNT, where they are outside and they are feeding um, those who need food. They are supplying food. They are supplying a hot meal also. So it do remember and that starts from 6.30 every Tuesday and every Thursday. And we'll be getting more and more news 
of different things that are going on in the community where the community are coming together and are helping um, helping the members of the community, which is what we're supposed to do. So, my lovelies, let me get myself ready to have this conversation. And the thing is, you know, I keep, as you notice, you might notice, I still got the broken glasses. I still haven't got around to ordering a pair, never mind. But um, I'm going to bring on my first guest uh, for this evening. We're going to have some conversation. We're going to just have a chit chat. And if you have any questions, do remember to put it in the comments. Um, I've also got you running on Facebook Live here. Um, you're everywhere in this room. So don't forget to put your comments. Those of you who are on the www email me info at yvonnemichelle.com. That's info at yvonnemichelle.com. And that is Michelle with one L, M-I-C-H-E-L-E. -E. All right. So you can still, if you're on the W dot, you can still put your comments and your questions to those who are in our interview room this evening. So I'm just going to get myself ready completely so I can see what you guys are putting on. There we go. Make sure that we are on silent and we are ready to go. Oh, good evening, Victoria Bright. She says, just getting ready for online church meeting at eight. In fact, it's every day at 10 a.m. and and 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Good, good, good. Lovely. Lovely to hear that. Lovely for you to join us, Victoria. Hi, Liz Holland. How are you doing? Those of you who are just joining, do remember to put your comments on the thread. So I'm just going to bring in my lovely guest whose name is Hannah. OK, here we go. She's in the green room. And here we go. Let's see. Good evening, Hannah. <laughs> Good evening, Yvonne. How are you? I am wonderful. Good, good, good. Yes. I can hear you loud and clear. So this is amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, you look amazing. How, How are you, you know? my How darling? Are you doing? I am absolutely blessed. I am so honoured to good. be on your show. Thank you so much for the opportunity. The queen of the radio. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> thank you for that you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome that. thank you <laughs> you're welcome oh my darling it's been let's see fine. he it has been hasn't overdue it overdue having you <laughs> yes Indeed. i've been watching oh and bless you and sharing and stuff <laughs> to develop and grow and blossom. yeah it's been a beautiful, beautiful thing to behold. So I just thought, you know what? I must get Hannah in and oh. let's have a conversation. Let's have a chit chat and see how you're doing. Fantastic. I'm so doing let really me just great. introduce Hannah. Hannah is a multi. Good, good, good. <laughs> OK, so Hannah is a multi award nominee and winner, um, an entrepreneur, motivational speaker, beauty expert event organizer and trainer. Her mission is to enable women who want to change their life, break through their limiting beliefs and achieve their dreams through various workshops, networking yeah. events and mentoring sessions. She's helped women get confidence to achieve um, great success in balancing family life and business. Oh my day, so let me just <laughs> welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. I'm Thank so you. excited Thank to have you today. You as well. I'm so excited to be here. So, so Hannah, let's just... <laughs> oh, good. So let's just have a chat. So, Hannah, you know, you've been doing all this work with women in business and lots of different events, but what was it that made you take this route to, to into this line of work? What was it? Um, it was actually the demands of many of the women that I've actually had an encounter with. Um, we have different women from all walks of life coming into our events. And um, we've seen a surge of aspiring female entrepreneurs who wants to actually start a business. And um, basically what happens is when there is a demand, you've got to listen to what the target audience wants. 
And so we decided that if we have a surge of female entrepreneurs who are ready to actually um, start something, perhaps they wanted to launch um, a product or maybe they wanted to actually make a start into starting their own business, this is actually a platform that I can actually help them with. So that put me in a position of an expert to give them the tools, the resources, and because I was already providing a platform anyway, which was the networking platform, and it was so easy to now basically start providing resource opportunities and giving them the tools that they need and also create a coaching program that has actually enabled them to actually turn all their aspirations and their dreams into reality. Fantastic. So, guys, you're here. This is... Hannah, now, can you pronounce your surname? Because I've stayed away from yes. it. <laughs> it's it's like, Kukuli. It's Kukuli. Kukuli. <laughs> All right. So say, say it with me. Come on, let's do the phonics. <laughs> Ku. Ku. Bo. O. Bo. Bo. <laughs> Luyi. Li. Lee. Louis, Louis. Louis. <laughs> yeah, Kubali. Yeah, Where did that name come from? I did try. Where so that come? name is from Nigeria. Um, it's originated from Nigeria. So mm -hmm. that's where that name is from. Okay. Okay, lovely. Does it have a meaning at all, or you know, like? Um, yes, it, it it has a meaning. Um, the meaning is very very um simple. Uh, it's, and it's simple, but it's a little bit sort of hard to even explain it. Um, um, I'll try and see if I could explain it a little bit later. It's quite complicated. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. No worries. I could explain it no. in my dialect. Yeah. But it's a little bit complicated in English. In English. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I know that a lot of Nigerian names have meanings and it's worth yes, knowing. They do. They yeah, do. They do. Absolutely. Worth knowing. So yeah. yeah, and that's why I asked really because yeah. I know. Oh, I could actually leave a comment of the English meaning of it in the comment box below. Okay, lovely. No worries. <laughs> that's, cool. that's cool. So you've been helping all these female entrepreneurs and um and just helping them get through their limiting beliefs and set up their businesses um, yes. and set up coaching programs as well. So. We have a lot of women listening in. Um, they listen in as and when, or they listen in on the show, and people are starting to come in on the show now. So um, we have a lot of women who are looking for an outlet, looking for a way to start their business. Some of them feel like they, they, they have the idea, yes. but they're not quite sure of what direction to go in, or who they should speak to. So you've got a lot of experience now of doing this and now and now an expert in helping women. So what yeah. if I came to you as a woman and I said, well, um, I'm a little bit um stuck, I'm unsure, and I wanna um I wanna start a business. I don't really have much resources, but I've got this idea. What would you what would you first the, what would be the first step that you would say to to a woman who comes across you? Your path. Um, okay, so basically it's about getting to know and understand the type of business, you know, the woman wants to start first and also getting to understand um, what the dreams and aspirations are and, you know, whether the person has clarity of what they want to do. Because often enough, when someone walks through the door, most of them are actually unsure of what they want to do. Um, mm -hmm. They have different ideas, but sometimes it may not even be that. It could be that there is something on the line in that they perhaps have not really tapped into. And this is where I come in. I fill in the gaps and I help them to gain the clarity. So what we do is we have a strategy session and we map out exactly what the vision is and we take it from there. So, for example, I have someone who is actually in the group who wanted to work with um, children, but... Mm -hmm. um, we realize that there are some certain um, sort of like um, qualifications that she would have to get in order for her to be regulated. And she felt that it might actually take her longer, but she wanted to actually make a start and really get on. So we started to look at the skills that she has. We realized that she's actually a mentor 
and she helps people to get employment in a line of work on a day-to-day -day basis. She gives them one-to-one -one help and one-to-one -one support. And she also gives them that confidence building session. So I said, all that stuff is amazing. You can actually package it and start doing your own training, running your own workshops. Mm -hmm. And you can be in a position of an expert who is actually able to train women or even men, you know, depending mm -hmm. on your client groups and depending on who you're targeting, who your audience are. So we can help you to actually package that in a nice way that you would feel very comfortable because you're already doing that. Mm -hmm. And so I've been able to help someone like that. And so even though they came in to come and do childcare and open a childcare setting, we've been mm -hmm. able to turn it around and let them see the potential and their skills, the skills that they already have already, mm -hmm. you know, and it was easy because she didn't have to go and do any other training. She already had a mental tra um, um, qualification already. And okay. all she needed was just clarity and that direction. So I come in to fill in the gaps mm -hmm. and I support and I, um, you know, give them the confidence because sometimes they come in with no confidence and sometimes they come in with low self-esteem, you know, and um, they come in with the um, notion that actually I don't think there's going to be an end result. So sometimes they have a bit of a negative um, mm -hmm. aspect to coming into the program. But very soon, within a few weeks, a month, we turn that around because I also work in partnership with another coach who is into mindset. So I feel right. like every woman needs a bit of mindset um, session because yes. we've been through so much. And yes, we know what we want sometimes, but certain things kind of make us feel demotivated. Mm. Okay. And so I definitely bring in the mindset coach to work with them, to uplift them, to give them mindset session, to motivate them, to get back on track. And mm. then I offer the business aspects of it. You know, so this is actually a really good team effort. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of power in collaboration, especially I'm now. I'm telling you. At yes. this time, especially yeah. now. Have you found any difference between like sort of like pre-lockdown and now lockdown? Have you noticed any difference in, uh, let me start with in terms of attitudes towards business in, in your group? Absolutely. There's been a level of demotivation in the beginning because, you know, the lockdown hit everybody. Mm. Nobody was sure of what to do. Um, some of us wasn't really sure how to actually pivot our business. We had to go back to our business module and to mm -hmm. see what we can now do better, how we can actually bring our business online. And mm. I've had to do that as well. Um, majority of what I do is offline. We offer services offline. We offer workshops, masterclasses, networking, you know, events. And um, one-to-one -one session, everything was offline, okay? Yeah. So we've had to now bring everything online. So I've had to actually train myself. I've had to teach myself how to use um, StreamYard to be able to stream some of my, my meetings, my podcast. Mm -hmm. I've had to learn how to use Zoom as well to be able mm -hmm. to host, you know, all my one-to-one -one mentoring and, um, you know, host other events as well. And so um, there was a level of demotivation, Um at the beginning of the lockdown. However, that's normal because even I felt demotivated, you know, mm. and I had to kick myself up and say, you know what, you've got this girl, you understand. And when you have one or two people in your corner that says, Hannah, you can do this. And sometimes not everybody has it, yeah, you know. That's true. So, so I've got one or two people that makes noise in my ears and say to me that you can do this. And my mm. husband is one of them. My husband is one of them. He's a force yeah. to reckon with. He kicks me up <laughs> when I'm when I'm when I'm down. Is like you better get up, girl, and go and get it. This is what you need to do, and I believe in you. Wow. So you need somebody to actually push you and encourage mm. you and empower you. So when you see me stand there, strong and bold, is the man behind me, my husband. Oh, yeah. look at that! Look at that! Listen to this. I tell you, we might call you on the Tuesday night show, Hannah. <laughs> It's <laughs> very, very supportive indeed, yeah. you know. So yeah. um, um, so as soon as the lady felt, um, one or two of the women felt demotivated, we had a one-to-one -one straight away and mm. we were able to bring in different strategies. We were able to put a map in place, a plan in mm -hmm. place to be able to help them through that. And I was able yeah. to also refer them to the mindset coach that works with me on this program. Right. And immediately the ladies rose up to the challenge. Before the end of the week, 
they all had all the things that they wanted to do and they were all feeding back to me and we all cheered them on because you know it was such a great feeling to know that changes can be made and you can actually get support but you have to open up you have to let us know what the problem is if you mm. keep it inside we can't know we will never understand what's going on so i always encourage them speak out mm. no matter how big the problem is just share it with somebody because mm. they may be able to help you so that's what i do Brilliant. Thank you. Those of you who are just joining us um, on the uh, on the show, I want to welcome you this evening. This is Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. We are live and direct on Luton Urban Radio and we are talking to Hannah and Hannah's going to say her surname. Yeah, Anna Kupoli. Is that right? Kupoli. Yeah. Kupoli. Anna Kupoli. Okay, lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Right. I've, I think I've got that one now. So, <laughs> hold on. We've got a, a, I think we've got a question. Yeah. Right. So, oh, so Teo is saying, um, you are right. Um, we need encouraging mentors to help um, to keep moving on. Um, absolutely. Teo is a wonderful lady, actually. She started mm. her, her, her business as well and um, she's doing really really well well she's she's trying really really hard and doing really really good work so you're right Teo in saying that we do need people we need more and more people to to motivate and inspire people to move from where they are to where they want to be especially um in this season that we're in yes it's, you know it's uh, not easy oh not easy I'm going to keep looking at this one and seeing. So good evening, everyone who's just joining us this evening for Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. And we have Hannah here and we are talking business. We are talking women in business tonight. We are talking about us moving forward and actually uh, gaining and, and creating the lives that we want to create as women mm. and and we want to encourage you that you too those of you who are listening you too can do this this is possible it is very very possible hannah before you were doing this work what what was your story what what, what were you doing okay so my background is in education and training and um, I, you know, coach and I mentor and I train women and I do lots and lots of different things way before All Women's Network was born. And um, I really, my journey started really, let me go back to my childhood. Um, growing back, growing up, okay, in the beautiful city of Lagos, <laughs> um, I used to basically um, just watch my parents be very accommodative to many family members as well as um, friends and also, um, you know, other people as well who are in need. My mom is so given and so is my dad. And mm -hmm. so um, we always have family around us. Sometimes my nieces and my cousins, they'll come and spend, you know, time with us and stuff like that. And um, there's always an event. And my mom was always sort of the queen of events. Um, she would be the one that leads the event as well. And my dad will also, ex you know, support her in the event. Not knowing that, everything that's happening, I was actually downloading it. And this was where my event skills started from, from when I was very young. Um, right from the time when I was schooling back home in Lagos, um, I used to host my friends. They come to my house during the weekends and we celebrate, you know, different things and we support each other. And so I was always bringing people together. I'm a community builder. Do you understand? I'm always mm -hmm. engaging with people. And I didn't realize that that was a skill, you know, mm. and here I am today coming to London. I carried on doing those things, you know, with my friends and my family, supporting people, giving to people, you know, to different types of charities and supporting them. Um, I support so many different charities like women's charity, domestic violence and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I also do events for domestic, for domestic violence women as well, who has been through quite a lot of things. We host pamper sessions and beauty okay. sessions, giving them confidence and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, All Women's Network really started from a very small um, church room, um, St. John's Church Room. And I used to just get all the school mums, right, all the children, all the mums from my children's school will come together and I'll say, you know what, today we're going to host a pamper party and I'll mm -hmm. do um, the makeup, 
Okay, I would tell them what to wear, how to get themselves ready for interviews. I would um, tell them the right lipsticks to wear, how to be confident, how to be bold, because I get quite a lot of positive compliments about the way I dress, the way I do my makeup, the way my eyebrows are. So I thought, okay, if I'm getting all these compliments, let me now teach these skills. And it started really from there. And I decided to start teaching beauty skills. I went back to college and I did my beauty um, training. I became an accredited um, certified professional makeup artist. And um, I was starting to do makeup, you know, beautifying people, doing wedding makeup and all that kind of good mm -hmm. stuff. And so um, from there, we started to have five women, 10 women, right. 20 women. And I started to charge them a little fee because we had to pay for the venue. We had to mm -hmm. get the refreshments. You know how it goes when you're doing events. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they were all happy to do that. And then I thought, you know what? Right. What do you ladies want? What do you want to happen? Because whatever you want is what I'm going to do. So I left it to them to decide um, during the period where we had a break because the room was not available anymore. So I realized that they wanted it. There was a need for it. Mm. And I thought if, if there's a need for it and they want it, I, I really want them to let me know what they want. Wow. Because I think we always miss it. We always feel like what we want is exactly mm. what the need is. But actually, it's what mm. the, the audience mm. want. That's what I need, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So they said, you know what? Is your phone Some... on? Yes, it's on. Can you hear me? I'm good. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of feedback yeah. as well. Yeah. Feedback's okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah. And then they said, well, you know, some of us, we lack confidence. Can you do um, sessions to do with confidence? We would like to improve our confidence and be more um, and improve our confidence and all that good stuff. And I said, okay, yes, I could do that. Okay. Um, some of us need training in terms of how to prepare for interviews, prepare our CVs and stuff like that. So we basically started from there. And um, I was doing the one to one session every month, every month. Right. I was doing that every month. And then I just decided that I wanted to put this under an organization, I wanted to now establish it. And so we now went forward and we now birth All Women's Network in 2015. Fantastic. Yeah. And now, and now you, it's 2020, so you're five years old. We are five years old indeed. And we have been growing from strength to strength. We're making an impact. We've won lots and lots of awards. Mm. Um, I've attended some amazing events where I have been um, recognised. You know, I've done so many things that sometimes I'm like, wow. You know, I've, I've actually done a lot. Sometimes you don't even pause for a minute just to see yeah. what you've done and how far you've yeah. come. But I always have a moment of pause where I'm just like, I'm so grateful to God. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because I've been able to make a difference in the life of women. I've been able to help and support them. And for them to also see themselves as strong women who can achieve whatever they put their minds to. Yeah. You know, there is no limits, you know, there, abs there is absolutely no limits and there are no barriers. The question is, do you want to actually make a move? Are you ready? Mm. You know, are you ready? Are you ready to do the work? And if you are ready to do the work, there is support out there. But you mm. have to be ready. You really have to think about it first and see whether or not you are ready to make the shift. You know, you're ready to step out of your comfort zone because... Everything that I did, it wasn't like it was comfortable for me. I have moments of being shy as well. I'm a shy person, but when I tell people, they actually don't believe I'm actually shy. I hear you. you. Know? I hear you. I hear you. Like, no way. She is confident. I'm like, okay, thank you. I will take that. But it took me time to yes. actually get here. Even doing a live sometimes, I'm pushing the envelope. I'm pushing myself out of the, out of the box, you know. Mm. And I'm also encouraging the wonderful women that I'm working with to do the same thing as well. Mm. You know, just take one step at a time. Absolutely. That is exactly what it's about. You know, sometimes, mm. you know, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are listening uh, to the show, what, what I want to do is I want to assure you that sometimes we look outside of ourselves and we we put people up on a pedestal and we think, oh, they're this and they're, oh, they're that. Mm. But actually, we are all the same. And we have fears, we get nervous, you know, yes. our palms sweat, you know, our forehead sweats and we're, you know, we have the palpitations as well. But what Indeed. we do is we feel the fear, but we do it anyway. Anyway, yeah. And so just to encourage those who are listening who are, 
who really want to change their lives, who really want to do something different, but are scared. You know, they're at that place that, you know, like, you know, like you see a baby and the mm. baby's learning to walk and they learn to stand up and they're not stable on their feet. They're rocking and they've got their hands out and they see all the adults walking, taking one step after the other. And you can see that they're concentrating and saying, if only if I could just put that one foot in front of the other, I could do yeah. what they're doing. And, uh, yeah. you know, for those of you who are listening, it's very much like that. You're in a place where you're seeing everybody do stuff and you're thinking, I really want to do it, but I don't know how to take that step. And it's almost like you're rocking backwards and forwards. But it mm. doesn't matter if you fall. It doesn't. You've got to remember, it doesn't. Because, because when you fall... Mm -hmm. You, you're, yeah, you're going to you're going to have to you're going to have to get up mm -hmm. you're going to have to get up we all fall but we have to get up and keep it moving yes. you know we all face challenges and struggles we've been hit hard mm. you understand i mean um there's so much going on behind the scenes yeah you know yeah. and sometimes when you hear my story other people's story it's almost like whoa mm. You know, so she's actually been through so much. And when I see her, she looks amazing. She looks like, well, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors or what has happened to you yeah. in the past. Do you understand what I mean? But at the end of the day, is either we kind of choose to stay and remain in that situation or mm -hmm. we make an effort, do you understand, to really disrupt the situation and move ourselves out of that situation by declaring to myself that you know what i'm ready to make a move i'm ready to stand mm. and really make a make a difference in my life and transform myself and you mm. know what if i can't do it let me go and seek help yes you know so is yeah. that you make you make you have to make that mind you have to make up your mind and i had to make up my mind that what do you want to do hannah i ask mm. myself that question every day what do you want to do mm -hmm. and i write it down okay today this is what i want to do what are you yeah. going to do to be able to achieve it? Then I put down my action plan. That's if it, it doesn't work, I reevaluate it, go back to it, and then I execute it, and then I achieve it. This is it. There is nothing impossible. Nothing. No. Nothing. You know, when you think that, that, that things are going against you, mm -hmm. and you defeat, that's when you know yeah. that there is a higher source, that there is something within you, there's a, a seed within you that's like saying, it's not over, it's not yes. over, just do this, it's not. and it's not over. And you find that you're able to do more. That, that, that's it. Yeah, that is you're it. able Absolutely. to do more. Um, it's just incredible. When you just step out of your zone and you go to that zone whereby you just think, you know, what? Well, what is the worst that can happen to me if I decide uh -huh. to make all these moves? What can happen to me? Do you understand what I mean? Like, what, yeah. what is it? Something great will happen to you. You will make a difference in people's life. You will add value to people's life. Your life will be different. Your life will be transformed. You'll be recognized for something that is absolutely powerful. Mm. So we really need to get support to overcome that fear because we have it. And that fear is actually what is stopping so many women and men mm -hmm. from moving forward. Yes. We have to be the one to help ourselves. People can only help you to an extent, okay? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you've got to make that shift. You've got to make that decision that today, <laughs> I'm ready to make that move, you know? Come on. Very inspiring, Hannah. It's, I can just mm. sit back here and let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because great. sometimes being in the comfort zone is so dangerous. Mm. You know, it, it prevents you from so many things, so many things. Um, yeah. It stops you from improving on yourself, from achieving your goals, from being the best that you can actually be, Absolutely. you know. I've not even done much yet to me. Do you understand? I'm grateful for what I've done, but it's almost like, there is still more to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there yeah. is still more yeah. to do and I'm ready to do it. Come on now. Yeah. You know, and I'm ready to do it. And that's what I tell all the wonderful women in my group that there is so much to do. You've only mm -hmm. just scratched the surface. There is mm. a lot that we can actually do. There is a lot that we can actually achieve. 
there is so many impact that we can actually make. Mm -hmm. And my mantra is just do it. Yeah. You don't need no validation from nobody. No. You do not need anyone, no validation to give you that that head start. Just do it. Yeah. Just just do, don't even think, just do it. <laughs> and do you know what? I have to say, I, I, I agree with you 100% because most of the things that I've done, I haven't thought mm. about it. It's just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's like me. Yeah. Because I have different, I'm a visionary, okay, <laughs> and I'm a creative. So you know yeah. what it's like, you know what our brains, you know, does every night, mm -hmm. filled with information, <laughs> nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I've got my pen and my paper here because as soon as I finish, probably an idea will come to my head. Yeah. And I just write it down straight away. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I'm a visionary. I'm a creative. I'm always creating. You know, I'm very visual. Mm -hmm. So to be quite honest with you, um, as soon as I have an idea, I just write it down straight away. Mm -hmm. And I just execute it. I yeah. just do it. Don't yeah, don't give yourself time to ponder over it too long. Yeah, or, I just or do it. Talk yourself out of it. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. And ninety nine percent of the time, it's yeah. been it's been really good. Yeah, you know, it's been I successful. Think those are the best decisions, right? They're the the best decisions. Just do it. See where it yeah. lands, right? Absolutely. Okay, so, so ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are listening, hit. There has been a tip, and it's the number one tip here. If you have something in your vision, if you have something to do, you want to try something, don't procrastinate. Just do it. Do it. All right. That's number one. Just do it. Yeah. Um, if you put, and the thing is, if you, what we do as human beings, when we get mm -hmm. this certain information, what we do is then we start thinking about it yeah. and thinking about it and thinking some more about it mm. and thinking some more about it until and then you never do it gets done absolutely yeah. so we want to encourage you that those of you who are listening on the www dot those of you who are on our facebook those of you who are on uh, youtube we want you to to just take a leap and just do it yeah just do it you're hearing from hannah here hannah who runs the all woman network um and that's you're based in london right you're in east london is it right yeah yeah yeah, so um, Hannah's based in East London and Hannah has been running her organisation for five years and I've watched this, 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 this company, this thing become a beast, do you know what I mean? You're just <laughs> out there helping so many, it, because that's how it is, you know, when you're in it, you might not see it, but you know, yeah. you're there, you're doing this, you're doing that, mm. and you're helping so many people you know, that, that are at that stage where they, they're quivering, they're standing and they're mm. rocking and they don't know how to take the next step. But it's almost like you're helping them to lift their foot and plant it so exactly. that they're able to make the next step. So, you know, I, I want to commend you for the work that you are doing. I really, really do. And I think Thank we you. need more and more of us coming together and supporting mm. each other. Now, one of the things that I like to talk about is us creating our own wealth as women. Mm. And because I've seen you help so many women, I just wanted to just kind of like scratch a little bit of it on you and to see yeah. what you think about us creating our own wealth and doing uh, uh, our own things independently. What do you think to that? As a married, as actually as a married woman, what do you think mm. to that? I think it's it's really important for you to be able to create something that is yours, something that you've actually birthed or something that you um, want to do. You know, that gives you opportunities and choices to make your own choices. It gives you the platform to be able to just do something that you can actually call your own. And um, I believe that, you know, being married should not in any way limit you from running your own business or maybe um, going back to university to do a course if you wanted to or going back to any form of training you know to actually make your life a better life for you to live a better lifestyle um, mm -hmm. I feel like um, every woman should be able to do exactly what they want to do to empower mm -hmm. themselves because it's really really important many many years ago women weren't given the opportunity 
to do so many things that we're doing today, you know, and there's been a rise of female entrepreneurship in terms of them starting their own business. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. And especially now that we've been given the platform and we have so many organization that is in place to actually help female entrepreneurs. I don't see the reasons why you can't start doing the things that you want to do where there mm -hmm. are opportunities in place, you know, for you to be able to access it and start doing all those things that you definitely want to do. It's very, very important. Um, you know, having your own money, it's, it's, it's important. You know, having your own savings is important. You can also have it with your partner, obviously. But, you know, having something that is your own is, 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 is an achievement, you yeah, know. It's key. Yeah, I think it's, it's key. a key, a key to, to a lot of issues that some women may face. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you, um, and the question, right, I was going to ask you, um, so we have a question here. So it, um, Carol Lorraine Rollins is saying, hair care, how do I, if she wanted to start a business, and mm. actually, before I ask Carol's question, this is a question that I was going to ask you. Um, yeah. I know the I'm asking you for the for the audience, but like now we're in this current situation. Yeah, is this a good time or is this a bad time to start a business? In your opinion? Okay. Um, to be quite honest with you, one of the women in my group, she actually. Um, registered a business two weeks ago mm -hmm. and it's just amazing because this is something that we offer in terms of the program as well to encourage them to register their business to become a full business owner mm -hmm. i've known about two to three people who have also registered a business during this season you know a lot of great things happen during disastrous um situations and sometimes there are positive things so it's up to you to actually see whether or not you want to go ahead and register your business now. So for me, I would say there's no reason why mm -hmm. not to register it now. You know, mm -hmm. it's something that you've been working really hard at for a very long time. And, you know, it's important to just do it. Why wait? Because you know what? Tomorrow is no one promised, <laughs> you I'm know. So if you can register, if you can register your business and start making money, then mm -hmm. I would advise you to do it. But think carefully and look at this sort of business that you are registering and look at the market and all that kind of stuff, you know, before you now decide to register it. Okay, thank you for that, yeah. Hannah. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask Carol Lorraine's question. She says, how do, she's hair care. How do I start, start, what would I need to do in order to get it off the ground? A business. Yeah, a hair care business. After hair care business. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, so yeah, so basically, what she can do is to does she have the products already? Whereby she can actually start doing it online and showing people the products, letting people see what the benefits of the products are, speaking to mm -hmm. the audience, creating um, an engagement online to let people see how the products will benefit them in terms of how the product is used. Um, so if she has it already, she can actually start online because, you know, building a community when it comes to business is key. Mm -hmm. And because when you have your audience already, it's easy for you to now start selling to them and they're able to see the benefits of what the product offers. Um, you want to look at your customers' engagement and see whether they are into your product. You want to ask them questions about it and, you know, even offer them samples for them to try and let you know if there's any feedbacks and stuff like that. I think even before you get to the stage of registering your business, you can do basic things such as live and share the products with people, let them see the products. And, um, you know, from there, they'll be able to, you'll be able to see whether you have a big following and yes. that would actually allow you to see whether you have a market there as well, whether people are actually interested in, in the products as well. Mm -hmm. You know, all those things really matters. It does. One of the things that I say to people that want to mm. get into business is look at what the look for the need rather exactly. than what you want to give to them. Yes. Look for what the need is, and you know that, yeah. that you've got customers there already. Exactly. If you just make something up out of your, I want to do this. You might not have yeah. the clientele to make that business work. But if you go yeah. for what needed, needed. Then, 
yeah yeah and yeah. that's why I always encourage everybody as well what is your product what do you have first does the market yeah. actually want it do they need it is it filling a need is there a demand for it so those things are so important yes uh, we've got somebody on the fit thread saying Veronica Roberts is saying to Carol Lorraine, Carol actually, she said, you need to do your research. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> the question. Yeah, we've got, some, we've got some experts in here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got um, Ali Mantu. Ali Mantu, is that how you pronounce that? Um, and she says, what is available out there for BAME women accessing business grants without breaking the bank? Well, I think there are some crowdfunding going on at the moment. Um, sure. I remember NatWest also doing some crowdfunding opportunities. Um, she Mean Business, one of those um, platforms that they run online. Um, they're able to help women with funding um, their ideas. So something that they could actually look into and tap into. Um, there's so many resources online, actually, in terms of um, business startups. Um, small mm -hmm. grants as well and also yeah. looking in your area in terms of the business hubs every borough has a business hub you know accessing those and finding out what they can actually do to help you and support you um, yeah. you know sometimes even starting a business you can actually just start small you know mm -hmm. without even needing you know a lump sum you yeah. know what I mean? And then eventually mm -hmm. you can start sourcing grants as well. See what you can do in terms of, of the services that you offer, whether, you know, you don't really need a lump sum, you know, immediately, but that you can mm -hmm. sort of access it a little bit later. Because yeah. sometimes getting grants and fund can be quite hard, isn't it? Yeah, it can. Funding, funding is not an easy process. It's not, <laughs> indeed, yeah. Not and this is something that actually deters people from starting a business. And I always encourage them, don't, say because of funding you're not going to start your dream business just yeah. you know see what you can do see what's out there see whether there's yeah. some little grants in your borough because sometimes you know different boroughs they offer small business grants that's um Thank the you. criteria is very simple so it's about yeah. looking around and seeing what's available actually yeah there yeah. are and, and and i can um just you know confirm what hannah is saying about there are business hubs out there especially for women there are a few out there are a few pots of funding out there um yeah. to get you started but what i would suggest you ladies do as well is you've got to get a, get a side hustle and 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 use that side hustle money to to carry your dream through because if you're one of the things that i tell my ladies is this if you're yeah. not in if you don't want to invest in your business Mm. with your own money why should anybody else so you've got to start thinking about this on a bigger level and start saying right how can yeah. I make x amount to invest uh -huh. in the business and then because sometimes with funding they want to see you match it so you of can course. go to, yeah isn't that right honey so yeah you know, you especially with crowdfunding yeah absolutely mm, yeah indeed so that's a thing, ladies, uh, to think about. There's some more questions here. Hold on. These glasses keep dropping off. But... <laughs> I, I sat on the oh, oh, you my laugh. <laughs> And I keep forgetting. To try How did you me. manage to sit on them? What you happened? Know, I, what, I don't know. But I'm too big, you know. <laughs> I, don't know. I just sat on my head. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, oh bless no. you. Oh, no. Yeah, so, so you have to wait for them to open up now, isn't it, for you to get a new well, one? Well, I kind of know that <laughs> I'm going to get one of those ones with the numbers on it. So I'm going to right. go on to Amazon or one of them and see if I can just... And see. Up. Okay. Oh, How bless you. This is... It's, no. I've got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't sure <laughs> you kept on taking them off. <laughs> no. It's because they'll fall off. Otherwise, oh, I'm yes. like... No. But, yes. uh, and they're like, <laughs> but never mind. Right. So Tayo mm. saying, how do we come together as women with interests in the same industry and work together? Oh, such a lovely question. You know, I've always oh. been an advocate for partnership collaboration. Mm -hmm. I mean, it shows in my line of work. I believe in winning together. It's so fun when you win together. And um, I love to do things with people, but not everybody wants to do that. 
And, no. you know, I keep on encouraging people to partnership with each other, to encourage each other to, to work together. But sometimes people just want to just do it by themselves and just do it solo. You know, let's be mm -hmm. real. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we have to keep on doing and pushing through. I believe in collaboration. It's really powerful when women come together, you know, individually, we are a force, but together, you know, we are stronger. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah, I do. So we are so at the end of the day, yeah, we are so much more when we work together as a team. Um, yeah. That is what I've always advocated. And I love to work with people, you know, so Absolutely. we all right, have to so make that ultimate decision, really, to find a way to work together. We do. We absolutely yeah. do. Got another question for you, Hannah. Please, uh, how do one, how do you monetize the work of empowering women and girls when often these platforms are run like NGOs? Yeah, so I think first you have to kind of understand the kind of business you're running. Are you running a charity, a charitable organization, or is it business? Because if it's business, then it should be a service that you're offering that would actually, you know, make make you have people pay for your services. Mm -hmm. But if you're running a charity, you're running a um, charitable organization, then most of those um, organizations are based on fundraising, they're based on grants, they're based on funding. So, um, and, it's, and it's all to do with the work that you're doing, that you're delivering to your beneficiaries. Yeah. So sometimes it may be difficult for you to even get a little bit of income from that. You know, so, um, but, you know, there are, I think there are other ways as well that you can actually see how you can actually get some form of um, support with that in terms Ooh. of maybe you're the one that's delivering the training or you're delivering the workshop or something like that. It all depends on the criteria, really, of the funding. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There, there are, there are ways. Um, when you because you're saying women and empower women and girls in, mm. in terms of the girls I mean if you could go through um you could go through the schools to get to and the schools have a pocket of money that they can um have people come in and work and do work through what you work through the schools and deliver programs and the schools yeah. will pay you as well um and there's public health um you could approach them as well so just in terms of younger people um but you just need to know that you've got your your paperwork in order and you dot the i's and you cross the t's because you're working with young people so you know it, it's stringent you have to have everything in place but there are ways um of of monetizing the work in schools so that i hope that helps mm. you there so thank you uh so we've got we've got some encouragement going on in the thread here oh because, you have okay um, yeah because um we've got uh veronica veronica roberts is saying set up a pop-up store at a marketplace i think that was for carol lorraine with the <laughs> hair product business with so, the hair care yeah, yeah it's all to yeah. do with marketing basically and doing that Ooh. research because you've got to know whether people need that product before you even make the product do you know yeah, what I mean? It's true. it's true. Yeah. And even because if you make it without, you know, consulting people, they still need to test it to see yeah. what it does yeah. and whether it's something that benefits them, you know? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, um, she said she will, it's um, Alamatu, she said she will look into that. And that's okay. good. It's, she said this has been an iron opener, would like to be earning an income. Absolutely. Mm. I think we must all earn an income. Absolutely. It's, you know, and that's what we must aspire to. Mm -hmm. uh, but think about, uh, as, I, as Hannah was saying earlier, you know, think about what, what is needed. Think about that in terms of what you can bring, what your skill set is. Exactly. Um, and then do it that way. Hannah, my darling, our time, do you know what? <laughs> like, so what I want you it goes do, really quick doesn't it it does do you know it does and 
now that we're on this lockdown and it's all like this and people not coming into the studio, it's like yeah. to time. But like exactly. normally, I have like having one, we're talking and we're yeah. bouncing off each other. It's so good. So um, absolutely, we're gonna do another. We're gonna do another show because we need to open this up. <laughs> You know, and, and just Absolutely. women in power, you know, women mm -hmm. in power, and we just talk yeah. about business and how we can business. help each other. Yes, but before indeed. we go, before yes. we go, give yourself a bit of a plug, you know, let people mm. know where that they can find you as well. Uh, before okay. you go. Yeah, so we're basically on all social media handles. We're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So it's All Women's Network. And you can actually send us an email if you want to find out about the mentoring program for women who want to actually start their business and they need clarity and support. So it's allwomensnetwork at gmail.com. Yeah. Okay, you heard it here. Yes. You had, had we can see the love hearts going up. <laughs> so, Hannah, <laughs> I want to thank you. I want to thank, thank you so you. much for coming on and and talking with us and sharing uh, just a snippet of your journey. But like yes. I said, we will have. We, I'm going to call you again soon. Fantastic, brilliant. Let, let, yes, do this thing and, and help some women uh, move yes. from A to B. To be indeed. And we also have um, a podcast on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. live interviewing female entrepreneurs and getting them to actually um, share strategies and tips to help other females in growing their business. So it's been really amazing being on the show. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Keep on doing the great work. And I will definitely invite you also to our podcast. <laughs> OK, that's wonderful. All right, my darling. Thank you so Thank much. You. And Thank I you. will be in touch. Keep doing what you're doing. You are a blessing to so many. And you Thank know you what? So I much. Just, I just love you. So take oh, care. And you as well. You. And thank you to all the wonderful guests. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank Bye. You. See oh, ya. Take care, darling. Bye. 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 You too. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, guys. So. There you have it. Hannah, she is a business coach, business mentor, and she is helping women across the board, uh, getting themselves into business, earning money. So, um, you know, she's giving you the handles. If you need to get in touch with her, get in touch with her. You know, she's a great, great lady. Everybody that comes on my show are, are amazing. And so I have another amazing lady um, who is not even in this country right now you know you know we do the global thing you know we do the global thing but this lady i've been watching this lady um for a little while actually and our paths crossed a couple of years ago at a conference somewhere i think in london and um <clears throat> i just i've just loved this lady from afar she's strong she's powerful she's a go-getter she's a trailblazer and so I am very, very honoured, I feel, to welcome Dillis to Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. Hello, my Hello, darling. Hello, Yvonne. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good, good. good. So, guys, Dillis is in Ghana, aren't you, Dillis? Yes, yes, she is. Dillis came to Ghana thinking she was spending four weeks and has been here nearly three months because the borders got closed and I'm here. Mm. Yeah. How, is, how has that been for you, darling? How has that been? To be honest, I think people are more worried about me than I'm worried about myself. Um, I don't think that things happen by mistake. So I don't feel that I'm here. Um, I don't feel that I'm here by chance. I think there's a reason why I'm here and I'm making good use of of the time so mm -hmm. it's been it's been very good for me very very good for me you know other than yeah. missing my children you know okay it's, it's yeah okay so I, I didn't actually realize that the children were not with you i thought they were with you no i came to promote my i came Your to a book launch and i had um in ghana and i also had um, a couple of interviews in nigeria so mm -hmm. i came to ghana two days i flew out to nigeria came back after about six days and a few days later, it was like, right, this is what's happening in Ghana, social distancing. And then the borders were closed and I've been hemmed in. So I'm right. here. OK, so how is life there, though? Is it, you know, with the social distancing and all of that, are they in lockdown like we are here kind of thing? Or 
we was were it? in lockdown. That was lifted, I think, about two or three weeks ago. But we took things very seriously here. I mean, the way it's been handled over here is completely different from, from England. You know, we mm. were very, 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 very quick. So the cases of the virus and the death toll is, I mean, it's incomparable in terms of, of low numbers to England mm. or America. So yeah, we, the president here did very well. Good, good. I like when people take action really quickly. Very, very make quick. the decision and That's it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good. Good. So do you know when the border's going to be lifted or? I have no idea. My flight has been changed. I think this is, this will be the fourth time. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm just like, Lord, you know, whenever you're ready, you'll, you'll release me. So, you know, I'm just here doing what I have to do and, um, you know, staying focused. You know, sometimes things happen in life, as you know, that you don't plan mm -hmm. for, but it's how you respond to those things that make it a problem or not. You know, you've mm. got to find, you know, your your harvest in the wilderness, you know? So that that's what I've done. So I'm very at peace. Other, as I said, other than my children, I would have been 100% fine as opposed to, you know, 99.9%. Right, okay. So guys, let me tell you a little bit about Dillis. Right, so Dillis, you're gonna to have to correct me with your surname, right? So Dillis Silla, is it Silla? Yes, Silla. Oh, Silla. Okay, so we have Dillis Silla. She's a transformational life coach specializing in emotional independence and relationship coaching. She is a TEDx speaker and founder of the former charity Who Will Hear My Cry that raised awareness on rape, child abuse, and domestic violence. Uh, is she is keen, she is a keen woman and child's advocate and author of the best-selling book, Not This Widow, a journey of love, sorry, a journey of grief, love, loss, strength and survival. Dillis is also the author of Predator or Prince, How to Find the Man of Your Dreams, Not Your Nightmares, educating women on how to get, how to spot red flags in men who may be emotionally or physically abusive that is amazing thank you okay so i'm going to start at the end and work my way back because i know you've got the book yes. right mm -hmm. and so but um can you tell us how because we we just spoke to hannah and she was like telling, filling us in and how she started because we have some women on the group who may want to write books or they want to get involved in business and change their lives. Mm. Um, they may have been in an abusive relationship and are looking for to, a way out or to find that perfect partner. So how did your like, story start? Where did you start from? I think for me, it was, because I, I work as a, as a life coach. And, but aside from that, I've always been interested in male and female relationships. For when I was a teenager, I remember being 16 years of age and asking boys, you know, what is it that you look for in a girl? And I, I would always get a lot of perspective from the male, you know, perspective, probably why I've never been dumped before, because I kind of did my homework first. <laughs> but, you know, I did a lot of research and it's just carried on, you know, throughout my life. And I've looked at relationships that women have had that have not been beneficial to them but not because we're stupid, it's because we don't know how to you know, spot those red flags. And when we do see them, we don't know how to interpret them. So I mm -hmm. felt that it would be important to put that information out there for women so that they could really understand how they could be in positive relationships. However, not starting from the relationship, but starting from themselves. So the book very much takes you on a journey from the girl child to the, to the adult female looking at the kind of um, messages that we're given from a very young age of what a relationship looks like. And when you look all around us, even from, you know, infancy, from primary school, you have books like Cinderella, you know, uh, Rapunzel, Snow White. It's always about this man that comes to validate the woman and mm. comes to rescue her, which isn't what should be happening in, in real life. You need to rescue yourself. And, you know, I can't remember what story it is where she, this girl kisses the frog and he turns into a prince. And I, I write in the book, if you met him and he's a frog, when you kiss him, he's still gonna be a frog. Your lips are just gonna be wet, you know? Mm -hmm. He's not going to change. And, it's, and, and the answer shouldn't be in our kiss. 
So we, we explore the, the prototype that we've set for ourselves for relationships. What was the connection between yourself and your father or not? Because mm. mentally we build a picture. And I, I, I talk about something called the present absent father, that there's no such thing. In the mind of a child, you will either make your father the hero or the villain. And whichever picture you've painted, that becomes the foundation of how you deal in relationships moving forward. But that's solidified in your teenage years, generally speaking, when you have your first love sexual relationship, then that prototype is set and we begin to you know, live out the ideas of what we have determined how a woman should behave in a relationship. So that, that's, that was my real motivation for, for writing the book. All right. So somebody said here, this lady needs to come on the love, love zone, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, guys, I'm ready for you. I'm, I'm at your service, you know? Yeah. Do you know what, Delis? I've just um, started a TV relationship show. Mm -hmm. So I will be calling you on. No problem. And I will be answering. Yes. I, I always say that my job is to serve people. Mm. I'm there as a servant. Mm. I, I help you meet your need. It's not about mm -hmm. me. It's about me being of service. So wherever I can provide that service, then I'm there. Yeah. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. This is going to be so good. I am so happy to have you here. Thank so, you. So you, you started off um, with the first book. Mm -hmm. But um, so was there something that, I mean, you were speaking about your, your journey in terms of always looking at relationships and, and stuff like that. Um, what made you get into life coaching? I think I'd always been a life coach, if I'm honest. People have always come to me for counsel. Mm. And I thought I didn't want to be a counsellor because, you know, with counselling, that's more helping you deal with your past. But I'm very much, and not that counsellors don't empower their clients, but I very much wanted to be that blind spot for people. I, I see myself as being that wingman to say, right, have you, have you checked here? Have you checked there? and help you to arrive at your own decisions. And that's really what a good coach does. I didn't mm. want to be a mentor because I didn't want to influence people just based on my own experience because we are very unique. And even mm -hmm. though something may have worked for me to deal with in a particular way, does not necessarily mean it will work for you. So I, I went into life coaching and I know a lot of people call themselves coaches, but I am certified and accredited. I spent a lot of money to you know, train properly to know mm. that I am adding value on, a, on another level when I'm dealing yeah. with, with clients. Good, good, good stuff. And, and you're right to say that, actually, because it is an investment. If you're going into coaching, it is an investment yeah. in yourself. It, you know, and, and we do spend a lot of money educating. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that you find a good school, reputable school to train you. Yes, I, I, I trained it with Animus. So they, they, were, they were really good. Mm. Just a little plug for them there, but yeah. A <laughs> yeah, little plug, yeah. I'm not saying who, I'm not plugging up. <laughs> They're not plugging me, we're not plugging them. <laughs> so, so moving on now, so you're a life coach and you're, you specialize in emotional independence and relationship coaches, which is fantastic. But you also have this amazing book. And just to let you know, Ladies and gentlemen, Dillis is a um, best-selling author and Not This Widow, A Journey of Grief, Love, Loss, Strength and Survival is a best-selling book. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the book, about the history of the book. So um, I hadn't intended on, <clears throat> excuse me, on writing a book, mm -hmm. not this book. Um, I lost my husband suddenly, <clears throat> excuse me, um, last, last year, 21st of January, um, 2019 and as I said I didn't intend to write a book but I was exposed to a lot of abuse and cultural how can I put it cultural pressures that I wasn't even aware existed and on that basis I just thought well how come nobody is talking about this in, in our community how come nobody has said anything because if people had said stuff, then I would have been better prepared to deal 
with certain things or at least to be forewarned would be to be forearmed. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the book because I felt that this is something that we need not just to have knowledge of, but we need to stop it. I mean, that was one part of the book, which is like the first half is, is a memoir. It talks about my journey of um, my personal grief journey. But the other half also, you know, talks about how we can grieve authentically, how we are able to, you know, redefine our lives after loss and not just be stagnant and to be able to move forward. It also speaks about how we can support people who are grieving because there's a lot of very weird behaviors when somebody loses someone. For example, though it was not my experience, there are a lot of people that lose somebody and everybody disappears. Nobody goes to check on them. That person grieving then wears a mask because it's like, well, I don't want to look sad or be crying all the time. Otherwise, nobody's going to come and see me. And I think that's just awful. And you know, I think that is not where the mind of a grieving person should be because you're dealing with so much yeah. that you need to be taken care of. So there's a, a lot of things that I, I discuss about that whole grief journey in the book as well. Mm. Okay. So how, I mean, for it to be a bestseller, that you've, you've had the sales and people are buying your books. What has been the feedback on the book? So I want you to kind of tell our listeners a little bit about, oh, gosh. you know, you're going to plug your book a little bit. You know. <laughs> yeah, so. I think the feedback has been very positive. If you look at the reviews on there, they have been excellent. And a lot of widows who have read the book have, you know, a lot of them said for the first time that somebody actually not only hears them, but are able to articulate what it is that they have been going through. And, you know, a lot of people have said, look, I've read the book in a day. I've had a lot of that. Um, in fact, the number of people that have read the book don't reflect the number of people that have given reviews on Amazon, but they have phoned me or people have contacted me via social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook or Instagram to say that book has really helped me. You've made me see that I can move forward. And I talk very much about embracing all your emotions. I mean, for those of us that have had children, I describe it as having contractions, but it's really intense and painful. And then you get a lull until the next contraction hits. And that's how, you know, grief is until you, you know, till you give birth, mm. i.e. you come to a place where you're able to handle where you are and accept what has happened to you. Because a lot of the times we struggle with the why, why me, why did this happen now? And that's a killer. That, that is something that I struggled with for a good nine months, you know, asking God, you know, why, why did this happen at this time? Because my husband had been ill and I had nursed him for three and a half years and we were at a place where he was getting better and then suddenly, you know, he passes away from, you know, complication from a very minor nondescript um, procedure. So the book very much talks about how to deal with sudden death, how to deal with death when you have notice of it but also by embracing all your emotions because what we tend to do, like when I gave the example of people wearing a mask, uh -huh. we tend to rush people through their grief. Oh, well, it's been uh -huh. three months now, or, you know, it's been a year, you should be over it by now. Yeah. You know, how do you get over grief in that way? Nobody ever wakes up and thinks, oh, it's been two years today, I think I'm absolutely okay, I don't miss or love this person anymore. That's not how grief works. And, when, and, and also to just debunk some of these cliches that time is a healer, time is not a healer. What time does is it teaches you how to cope if you know how, what tools to use to help you how to cope. Absolutely. I, I you know, I, I could sit and listen to you because I know what it's like to lose my son. Um, I'm and so I've sorry, shared... I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, yeah, I've, I've lost the son. And so, and you're right. It, you know, I often say that it's, you know, with time you learn to live with it. That's mm -hmm. what time does. It allows yes. you that, that you live with it and you can get on and function. Mm. Doesn't necessarily mean that you are over it. Over it, it no. Yeah. It just means that you And you, you know, like when people say, move on and it's something i always say do not tell a grieving person to move on what we do is we move forward we don't yeah. move on you know so i think some of the you know i address some of the terminology 
um, that we use to a grieving person mm -hmm. that makes it more painful, yeah. you know, where you're feeling that you have to hurry up and satisfy people just because they feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. around grief because death is not something that we speak about and we don't explore those emotions where I'm very much an advocate of embracing all your emotions, managing them and labeling them so that when they show up, you can handle them. And I think it's, it's really important and it's because of that, as well as my faith that has helped me be able to cope and in quote, do well according to people in, okay. in terms of when this horrible life-changing experience actually happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it is, you know, people's perceptions of your how you cope. Mm -hmm. It's very much it's, oh, you know, you're coping really well. But it's yeah. the perception because they might see you out and you're yeah. looking lovely, hair's done, you know, you're not wearing black. Oh, you've done well. Oh, you know, you're strong. Yeah. But actually what's going on inside? How are we feeling inside really? Yeah. And I just want to touch on what you were saying about um people disappearing after mm. in that grieving process. I know from from a Caribbean culture, I know that, and this is what I've experienced myself, um, is that when someone part does pass away, um, there is that time and we have the nine night and we mm -hmm. have the funeral, and then you might have a week or two after the funeral, and then mm -hmm. you start to see people just kind of disperse. Whereas yes. in all of that time, when it initially happens, everybody's around and everybody yeah. helping and trying to do, and then all of a sudden, you have this house full of everybody till there is nobody. No and for me, I think that that's one of the harder things to deal with. And so for me, when I know somebody has passed away, I may not go around the house when everybody's there, but I might just give mm -hmm. them a call. Can I pop over? when I know the house is empty, because that's the time it's needed most. It's interesting because I was the opposite. Having okay. so many people in the house was killing me. Right. It was killing me. It was constant. I know a lot of people and my husband was mm. very popular. Okay. And I had people in the house, sometimes the door would, you know, someone would knock on the door at nine o'clock in the morning and I'll have the last batch of people leaving sometimes after midnight and it was killing me because as much as I'm a very sociable out there person I'm very very uh -huh. introverted and I like my own space probably to the point of it un being unhealthy so I struggled I really uh -huh. struggled so after the funeral I came to Ghana for five weeks okay. I you know books in you know an apartment I came with the kids nobody knew I was in town I didn't do any interviews nothing like that I just kept myself to myself but I, mm -hmm. but I hear you because I'm probably very much the exception mm. to that. And, you know, I'm very fortunate because I do have a, a core group of people who are always going to be there for me. So mm. I was never, ever going to be that person that was going to be left alone. And I do appreciate, you know, the amount of love and support that was that's being shown to me even today. You know, mm -hmm. people still message me. Somebody messaged me a few days ago. That, oh, I've been off Facebook for two years. I didn't know that your husband was unwell, uh, that your husband had passed away, and and it and it is nice. I do I do appreciate it, mm. but I wanted very often to just retreat mm. and be in my own space. And I think another thing that I struggled with was people telling me how I felt. Mm. People don't ask you how you feel; they will tell you how how you feel. I.e., today must be very difficult for you. Well. By the time 10 of you have said that, of course, today is difficult for me. Actually, today was quite OK. I was coping great till you opened your mouth, you know, and I know it's a it's a fine line. But I'm, mm -hmm. this is why I had to just be blunt and say, ask the question, how are yeah. you feeling today? Is there anything that you need as opposed to labeling my emotion and yeah. telling me to take that on board? Because already your spirit is very sensitive to everything. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't find that helpful. Mm. I can imagine. Because, you know, conversation, this this thing here, mm -hmm. death and life is right it's here. Enough. Absolutely. It's right here. So we do have to be mindful of how we are talking. We're getting a lot of, yes, that's right, girl. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. 
We have Sorry, a, one we... second, Michelle. I just need to turn off the fan. One second. Okay. <laughs> So for those of you who are listening, those of you who are on Luton Urban Radio, we are talking to Dilla Silla. We are also, um, we are talking about uh, Dilla's experience before, um, during writing or before writing her best-selling book, Not This Widow, A Journey of Grief, Love, Loss, Strength and Survival. So was the book... Was writing the book therapeutic for you? No, okay. it was hell. Okay. Um, and I've, I've answered this question many times where, when I've been asked this, that it was traumatic because I didn't think about what I was doing. I was motivated by, I cannot believe this is what goes on. I cannot believe that my experience and treatment is not unique and exclusive to me okay. therefore people need to know about it we need to fix this uh -huh. i was okay up until i started to recount my journey of where it began with my husband when he fell ill unexpectedly on holiday and that's when i literally my face broke out i was getting stomach cramps i was ill and i had to take a break for you know quite some time because one of the things that was also very um, challenging for me was the fact that I wanted the book to be published on the anniversary of my husband's passing, which was 21st of January, 2020. So that yeah. was my, my motivation. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I wrote that book in four months, Okay. three or four months. I didn't count the cost of what it would do to me emotionally. And the other thing that I forgot to mention, is I sought the services of a counsellor. And sometimes people think that if you're a life coach counsellor, you don't need those things. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, you know, at the point, I, I, I had done as much as I could for myself. And obviously, being a coach, I was very in tune and very in touch with how I felt and was uh -huh. very conscious of all the emotions that I was feeling. But I got to a point where I recognised that I needed to have additional support. And that's okay. when I, I got a counsellor involved. I think it was in September. And, you know, she was able to help me, you know, walk through that process of writing the book and me mm -hmm. having that, that outlet because it had a real adverse effect on, on my health, especially having to yeah. do the proofreading where I'm having to read all over again because what was okay. difficult for me was knowing where the story was going to end. This wasn't right. just a book where I was going to determine the ending. I, I mm. wasn't able to write The Happily Ever After. I wrote the book knowing that this is how it's going to end. And it was difficult because when I put myself in that place when my husband first fell ill and the prognosis was, was fine, that, you know, in five days he'll be up and he'll be, you know, okay, he can move, come back to the apartment and you guys can fly back to London. That never happened. We ended up leaving Portugal where my husband fell ill um, mm -hmm. nearly three months later via air ambulance straight into North Middlesex Hospital. And in total, he was hospitalized for six months. And then, you know, it was just one thing after another, because when he had the um, surgery, he got an infection in the wound. And that's when things just went downhill. So I right. knew how this story was going to end. And, but I knew how I felt at different, you know, junctures where there was hope, there was yes. faith. I was trusting and believing God that this was going to end well. So now being in that place that he's, he's not here okay. and this is, this is the end of my story was very, very difficult. Very, very difficult for me. Yeah, I, I, we can only you know, imagine what you've been through. We will never ever know, you know the feelings that you went through personally. You know. But what I can say is that I am so grateful that you are here today. And Thank that you. you have told the story mm. and that you've let people know your experience from your point of view. Mm. And I think that's a really powerful thing because I think our voices need to be heard. Absolutely. You know, and as you say, it was because of does this this does this go on? You know, to to bring something, to highlight something mm -hmm. to the masses that th actually this is going on and this is not right. Mm -hmm. No, this I mean, in the book, I... sorry, Michelle. So in the, uh, Yvonne, I actually shared the story of three widows 
and also the child of a widow because I felt it would be important for people to know what it's like from a child's perspective, mm -hmm. what it feels like for them to see their, them having lost their father, whether, well, I would say unexpectedly, even if the person was terminally ill because they didn't expect their father to be terminally ill and have to die, mm -hmm. but also how their mother is being treated mm at that time, because I remember my children saying to me that, mum, because of what's going on and the way you're being treated, we aren't able to grieve. And that's when I had to just lock it off. And I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna mm -hmm. take control of this situation. This mm -hmm. is not gonna happen anymore. And I did some pretty um, unconventional things within my community, such as getting security at the funeral and doing um, an Alan Sugar, you know, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired, you ain't coming to the funeral. Wow. And I just okay. wasn't playing. And I said, mm -hmm. it's not happening. And I, I think mm -hmm. that's why I named the book, Not This Widow. It might be another widow, but not this one. Mm -hmm. You don't get to dictate the terms and conditions of how I bury my husband or how I grieve or when I'm ready to live again. You don't have the right, I will not empower you to mm. tell me how I will live my life. There's only one God that I serve and you are not it. He's the one that has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. You can't tell me about my life. Mm -hmm. And I just had to shut it down. And, and you know, and I'm, I'm glad that I did. You know what? I'm glad you did too, because at the end of the day, <laughs> what you've done, you've yeah. set a trail. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this lady's a trailblazer, yeah? She is just not having it. Yeah. And this is, this, is what, this is what being a coach really is all about. It's, taking back your power and, right. you know you can't give your power to to people for joke you just can't do that mm -hmm. so i i am i'm very i feel very, very blessed you're here my sister i tell you, <laughs> bless you. i tell you, uh, fee says absolutely people often say hurtful things while while they think they're being supportive mm. and oh, that's God, yeah 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 and so and sometimes you know Sometimes I say, if you don't know what to say, don't say anything. It reminds you me know? of that um, Jamaican comedy that used to be on, on, on TV. I can't remember. Was it The Real McCoy? Shut your mouth, shut your mouth, shut your stinking beak. That one. <laughs> and I, God knows I felt like telling a few people to shut your mouth, shut your stinking beak, you know? Because at times that was just would have been like the most appropriate thing, you yeah. know, to say to some people, you know? Mm -hmm. But yes, people did say very hurtful things. And I share this in the book that, you know, it's a very West African thing. I can't speak on other parts of Africa because I'm not too au fait with what happens in East Africa or North Africa. But a, a, a husband mm -hmm. can't just die. His wife must have killed him. So you are accused. Oh, oh yes. And I was, I was not exempt from that accusation. And I'm thinking... I looked after my husband for three and a half years with no input, no support, no anything from a majority of his side of the family. But the moment my husband passed away, mm -hmm. they were having meetings behind my back. I was being vilified. I mean, I'm talking 48 hours after my husband passed away suddenly. My husband passed away on the, on the Monday. By the Wednesday, mm -hmm. foolishness had started. Foolishness had, had started where I'm being accused of disrespecting the family and, and doing this. I mean, it was, it was horrible. It was horrible, you know? And I just thought, who does that? Because you're under the illusion that because you're bereaved, that everybody's bereaved. No, I lost my husband. They just happened to have, they just happened to have um, had someone pass away. That's all. Because if you were grieving, there's so many yeah. things that you would not, sorry, that was the dog. <laughs> if you were yeah, grieving, we, yeah. you gathered, right? All right. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you were grieving, you wouldn't have time for that. I had no space in my head, in my emotions, or anywhere else mm -hmm. other than to deal with the stark reality of what I had lost. Mm. I couldn't understand that if you were in the same place as myself, how is it humanly possible that you have the capacity to send abusive text messages, mm. send accusatory messages to the man's wife. I just mm. couldn't understand it. And I, I, 
just refused to lay my husband to rest with my children and look around and have anyone there that I didn't feel had earned the right to be there. Because wow. just being blood related to me, you didn't earn the right to be there. So his brother was not at the funeral. In fact, I got security. I said, if you see him, you remove him. And they removed him. I gave his picture to my security guy. I wasn't playing. I wasn't playing. I thought you would. And you see, and another thing, because of the kind of marriage that I had and the, the kind of man I was married to, I could literally hear my husband's voice in my head mm -hmm. telling me, don't take this nonsense from these people because he wouldn't have had it. Right. And I felt that I would l be letting him down by allowing myself to crumble and be a mm -hmm. doormat to be walked over. And this is why I always emphasize to women that don't stay in a bad marriage. Because if you lose your husband, you'll realize that it was all for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely say, I know exactly how my husband would have wanted me to have behaved and I did it to the T. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that I would never have forgiven myself if I had allowed myself to have been abused and maltreated. I think, I know that Eddie would have been disappointed that, you know, I've been with this woman for 17 years. Mm. And I see how she fights for people, and then she can't fight for herself. Then I didn't know this woman, and I didn't mm. want that. Mm -hmm. No, no. But I love the way that you said, you know, you fight for all these people. Mm. So really and truly, you know, the expectation of your husband would have been that you fight for yourself. 100%. Yeah. And sometimes, guys, you know, we are in families, and as much as they know your personality, and they know that you are a fighter, they still expect that they can come and just walk all over you. And like you said, that's just not on. Mm -mm. So you no. stand tall, my sister, stand tall, Thank stand you. strong. You know, you know who you are. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, you know whose you are. Thank so, you, absolutely, 100%. Ooh, so you, you do your thing. So guys, you've heard it here, Distilla Silla here. She's a, a best-selling author. She's talking about her book, Not This Widow, um, a journey of grief, love, loss, strength, and survival. Guys, this is a bestseller, so you know that you'll enjoy the read. So I'm going to say to you guys, go out and buy the book, support, support the author, support our own, support our people, you know, you never know, this book could be made into to, um, a film. You don't know. I receive that what? in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know what's around no, you the don't. corner. You don't. You know? In fact, I have been spoken to about turning it into a film, if I'm being honest. It, someone mm. has suggested that. But we'll see. We'll see how it mm -hmm. pans out. It would be good. It would be good, I think, because we need, our people need to really see the effects of how we speak to one another oh, yeah. um and it's across the cultures across the difference the, the caribbeans the africans it's it's yeah. across the board of how yeah. we speak to each other our expectations of yeah. one another as well you know because we can be very hurtful to one another mm. so so veronica said no fee says yes the fir the firm and informed decisions you make for you or yourself are the best and she's got her hands up um veronica saying we say if you have nothing good to say just keep your mouth shut yeah simple. <laughs> yeah, simple simple it's thing sim yeah, Absolutely. It, is. Yeah, simple. it is nothing good to say shut mm -hmm. your mouth mm -hmm. you know <laughs> just, i'll pray for you I don't know. I'll be binding, you know. Yeah, yeah. prayer of deliverance. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so now, so moving on. So, since the book, since um, writing the book, mm -hmm. how has the journey been since you've actually you've gone past the stage of you know where you've had to proofread it? It's now been published, and and so you are on the first journey of the book's been published. How was that for you? Um, the book was published on the anniversary of my husband's passing and I was dreading that day. And as you know, I, I, there's a chapter in the book called The Incoherence of Grief because it is incoherent. I said grief has got no respect, it's got, it's got no behaviour. Mm -hmm. It would just show up when it likes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't care that you're at the store, 
it doesn't care that you're amongst people trying to have a, a good conversation and it's something will happen and bam, you know, it will just slap you in the face. So I was, I was dreading the 21st of January. However, I woke up about six o'clock in the morning and I found a, um, a WhatsApp message from my publisher. And she was like, the book's at number 15 on the hot new uh, bestsellers list. I'm like, hot new releases list rather. And I'm like, mm -hmm. number 15. And throughout the day, it just kept climbing, 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 climbing till it got to number one. And on what the that first did for day. Me, on the first day. Fantastic. What that did for me, oh, thank you. Yeah. It gave me a new memory. Mm. It gave me a new memory aside from this was the day I lost my husband. Mm -hmm. It was the day I was given a gift because of my husband. Mm. And it changed the meaning of that day for me. And a few days later, I had the book launch, which was, it was very successful. So that whole period where I could have just gone down, 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 mm -hmm. just changed. I had something good to celebrate and to embrace. And that was really the beginning of the next chapter of my life, mm. you know, and, and, I, and I'm living it. I'm, I'm actually living it now. I've, I've, I made the decision to be happy because I was tired of that sadness in my soul. And um, it's indescribable. You know, you can't, there are no words. I, I, I kind of try to describe it to somebody as having your skin stripped away and having kerosene poured in the wound and set alight and in your skin, you know, plastered over it and just repeat and repeat. That was the only way I could describe the pain. And um, I've worked through a lot of it. And obviously being a woman of faith, I have finally, and when I say finally, I mean as in yesterday, praying and saying, Lord, I'm ready for you to come in and complete that work because I wasn't ready. Mm. I wasn't ready because I felt I'd done what I could do to manage my grief myself. Yeah. And I knew that there was something deeper, there was a deeper work that needed to be done and I wasn't ready. But, you know, when grace is mixed with healing, mm. it's a beautiful journey that becomes bearable and is not reliant on your own strength and your own ability to be able to reach the other side. Mm. So yeah, I'm in a very, very peaceful place right now. Very peaceful. Good. I'm so happy to hear this, you know, um, and from all that you've been through and, and to know that it's, it's only been a small p period of time. Yeah, yeah. You know, because January was a year, we're now in May. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not long at all, and yeah. to have gone through all of those things, all the accusations, all of mm. all of those hurtful things, all those hurtful memories, and to be at a place now, like it's not even eighteen months, really. No. Don't think. Is it eighteen months? Mm -hmm. it's like, It'll be eighteen months. In June. Yes, right. And you're in a place of peace. That is nothing but the grace of God. Hundred percent resting 100%. on you. Mm. Ooh. Grace so this, and favor. Grace and favor. Can't do much without it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, right, so Tao said yes. Oh, going back, she said yes, yes, please. We want a film. You have your first actress. <laughs> are, you, are you volunteering? <laughs> Tao, are you no volunteering <laughs> to be the first actress? I want to welcome those of you who are jumping in, who are here with us. Um, this evening, we want to thank you for joining us. We've got Dilla Silla here, and she's talking about her best selling book, Not This Widow. Um, Veronica Roberts says, When serve lemons, make your lemonade, hun. Make mm -hmm. it indeed. And, and um, Teo saying again, Well done for number one, and bye bye to pain and welcome to victory, joy and Amen. Pain. Thank you. Amen. Amen to that. You know, Thank we've you. got a, a lovely, lovely following on here this evening. And you know, there'll be much more comments as as the evening goes on. Mm -hmm. um, so now that you are here, 
in this place mm. um, and you have become a best-selling author mm. you are now at peace and you mm. have this and thinking of maybe thinking of a film I'm speaking it I'm speaking Amen. it I receive it come on bring it, it up. <laughs> and and uh, one of the I don't know if it wouldn't be a best-selling film but it'd be like an award-winning film mm. that's what we're looking for Amen. We need to start making our own. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where yeah, I'm at. True. Let's, let's yeah. do it ourselves and let's mm-hmm. get it done. I so, agree. what's next for you? Well, I am working on a TV show called Speak with Dillis. I've kind of started, not kind of, I have started on, on Facebook. So, every Sunday at uh, it would be eight o'clock your time seven o'clock mm-hmm. um, my time here in Ghana at the moment mm-hmm. um, and we talk about I think the last one we did we were speaking about why divorced women are stigmatized in certain communities and why they're looked down upon mm-hmm. um, so that was really interesting <clears throat> so we're now doing a part two because we weren't able to finish but it was like can we do a part two can we do a part two so we're doing that mm-hmm. um, and then I spoke about oh gosh we've had quite a few you know uh, relationships uh, domestic violence we've covered so that's what I am you know putting my energies uh, into at, at present and there's a lot of opportunities that are opening for me even as a speaker so I'm going to be going back to Nigeria at some point when this whole thing finishes mm-hmm. um, to work with uh, some with a widow's charity out there that look after about 3,000 widows and they've asked me to come yeah. you know as a keynote speaker to encourage and you know help empower these women and I think that the message is that there is life after widowhood and again, yes. because of the way we are labelled and because of the way we are, again, put in a box, you know, I mean, I'm being funny and I say this all the time. If I were a man, I probably would be married to my wife's friend. Yes. Come on. And no one would bat an eyelid. Nobody. You know, and I, I spoke about this yesterday where I know of a lady who passed away and her husband's her husband attended her funeral with his girlfriend. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah, Let a woman do that. I know. You'd never get away with it. Let can a woman do that. You, can I share something with you? And this mm. happened many, many years ago. But when my, my mother passed away when I was 11, and I kid you not, my mum died on Mother's Day. That was a Sunday. Oh. And by, I like to say by the Wednesday, but my sister would say, actually, it was the next day. The next day, his other woman moved in to my mum's bedroom the day after she passed away. And it was, you know, it was. I'm doing a part two. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I've put in my notes is I want to talk about that woman. The Mm -hmm. woman that feels that it's okay to be that woman. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what I want to, that's what I want to um, talk about. Yeah. Because we women need to do better. Sometimes you think that you've got the prize. You have. It's the booby prize. Mm-hmm. That's what you've got. But a woman that respects herself would never behave like that. Just be, even just because of the children. For real. And sometimes, so when I hear, especially when women say, oh, it's got nothing to do with the, the woman, it's the man. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. It's everything to do with the woman. Because if I'm with my husband, and you can see that I'm with my husband, the fact that the man, let me not use my husband because he wasn't that kind of a person, but let's say I'm, 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 it's not my husband I'm talking about, hypothetically mm-hmm. speaking. The mm-hmm. fact that he wishes to misbehave does not mean that you and I don't have any business. In my world, that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why it doesn't work. And maybe this is something for the love zone. Mm-hmm. Unless you're married to a dog, a man that will lay down anywhere, then mm-hmm. what I'm about to say is not applicable to him because he will sleep and lay down anywhere. Mm-hmm. But not every man that has an affair is a dog. Mm-hmm. But, and I will break this down because I'm gonna keep it really real here. Okay. Few men who are decent men will wake up one morning and think, oh, today's the 18th of May. 2020, I think I'm going to go and have an affair. Things happen in stages. 
And if you have a woman who is smart, like myself, thankfully I don't use my intelligence for nastiness, mm -hmm. your husband wouldn't stand a chance because there is a strategy to being able to ensnare somebody if you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So if you have such a woman and there are problems going on in your relationship at that time, and that woman is prepared to play the long game, be that mm -hmm. friend, and not make it obvious, just be that friend, one of the guys, somebody to hang out with, Mm -hmm. Before you realize your husband is in a situation he hadn't bargained for. Mm -hmm. We being women and are smarter than men when it comes to being able to spot other women trying, trying it, mm -hmm. need to draw their attention. And where yeah. these men sometimes fall short is they look at their wives and think, yeah, but my wife is better looking than this woman. So, of course, I'm not going to go there. Mm -hmm. But that's a big mistake. And I have been in that situation before where there was somebody that was after my husband and it became a fight between me and him because he was like, well, I'm not interested in this woman. Uh -huh. Look at this woman and look at you. I said, my friend, at night, let my Ghanaian accent come out. At night, when he turned that light off, that hole is still round door. Doesn't make any difference. Yes. Doesn't make any difference. And that's why a lot of women yes. will be like, look what he cheated on his wife with. There is a process. Uh -huh. Now, if she had been attractive, if we had been having problems in our relationship, I knew what she was doing. She would call my husband. I remember there was one time she came to the house. This was just after I had my daughter. My daughter was, oh gosh, she must have been about six weeks old. And mm. she'd made food. And um, my husband came and woke me up and said, look, so-and-so has been here for a while. And I think he was feeling a bit uncomfortable. Uh -huh. And when I'd gone downstairs, they'd eaten. And I clocked uh -huh. that the food on the plate was dry. And she said, oh, I just got here. And I thought, you can't play a player, girlfriend. You mm -hmm. can't play a player. Come so on. I saw her coming, but this is another story for another day. So <laughs> you've got to be smart about mm -hmm. it. So it's mm -hmm. not just about, well, you only have business with your husband. If I had dealt with my husband, he couldn't see it coming. I could see it coming. See and when coming. I confronted yeah. her and I handed her back her backside, she couldn't even apologize. Mm. And I thought, yeah because you got caught. So yeah. we, we've, we've got to hold each other accountable as women. Don't okay. try and come for my man. I, I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't play like that. Listen, girl, we got to have you back. We got to get you back. Let me just see. Um, oh, Fee says there's no accidental infidelity. You, you have to tell them. Veronica's saying you drop the mic, girl. You just want that out. Just yeah, I mean, mind. it's not that it's it's not accidental. Hear what mm. I'm saying. I'm not saying the man mistakenly falls in a woman's vagina. I'm saying mm. there is a process is. that breaks down those defenses that he may not see the person coming. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that if you're with a man that... I'm not being funny. Let's not have double standards here. It happens with women. Mm -hmm. You know, and if the man is smart and you know that the woman is not being treated right, these guys are clever. They will start to yeah. treat you right. They will be your friend. They will do all the, like Joe said, do all the things your man won't do. Mm -hmm. You know, there That's is true. a process. That's why I said that I'm not talking about men who are dogs. And I do not believe that every man that has an affair is a dog. Likewise, I don't believe every woman that has an affair is a hoe. Mm -hmm. We've got to keep it balanced here. Mm -hmm. Things happen. You know, situations happen. And that's why we need to get in there quickly and keep that communication and, and stuff going so that you don't fall in that, that trap. You know, mm. so we just got to be alert, be be wise and keep your eyes and your ears peeled. Absolutely. So, Dillis, we're coming down to the end of the show. And you know what? There's, I've been talking to you so much that what I was supposed to do was this. Because I put your details <laughs> on the screen. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just sure been so up. engrossed in the conversation. <laughs> yeah. But um, is there anything, have you got anything planned? Let us know what you're doing now. You've got a few minutes because we're coming to the end of the show. So okay. just let us know what you're doing. Just plug yourself right now. Okay, so 7 p.m. on Dillis Silla fan page, which is on Facebook um, every Sunday at 7 p.m. I think UK time is 8 p.m. Um, I do a show called Speak With Dillis. This week it is a part two, talking about divorce and stigma and how you can uh, basically get your life back. Um, so yes, that is one of the main things that I'm I'm doing, and there's a lot of engagement on there, a lot of interesting topics. Obviously, get the book. I think it will be a blessing to you. I also talk about things like life insurance and 
you know, planning for the uh, inevitable. You know, we don't know when we're going to die. And I think that these are some of the conversations that we don't have, especially within our community. We don't talk about death. It's just not done, especially as a Christian. It's like, oh, well, then you're not in faith. You're tempting fate. We need to come away from all of that that mm-hmm. talk because Christians are t- still dying, yeah? So, yeah. you know, we need to just be um, very aware. So I would encourage people to get the book. And you, th- there is something that I think would be very helpful, as well as Predator or Prince. It's a book of self-healing. So don't be uh, swayed by the title. It's I'm not giving you 10 steps to find your ideal man. I'm giving you more than 10 steps to find your ideal woman within yourself and, yeah. you know, take control of your life and live your best life. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Having... I'm just going to go for a comment. But Teo, Teo says, she's one of your guests. I am divorced, not a widow, but definitely get what you are saying. So I do believe that Teo will be listening on... Um, Sunday yes. to your to your speak with Dennis. wonderful. Um, so yeah, so we've had so much wonderful feedback on the thread. Dillis, I want to thank you so much for thank joining you. us all the way from Ghana. It's yeah. been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And I will be inviting you back again. I think you just I'm need there. a two hour. We need a two hour. No problem. I'm there. I'm, I've got you. Right. <laughs> wonderful. All right. So. I'll be in touch soon Thank in a few you. weeks and we'll bring you back. And right. hopefully you'll get to come home safely and, um, you know, do what you're doing yeah. once you're back home. By God's grace. Thank you so much. God bless. Take care. Bye. God bless you. Thank Bye-bye. you so Bye-bye. much. Bye. 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 So, guys, I'm here. <laughs> so, yes. So, as you can see, we're coming down to the last five minutes of the show. And I want to thank you guys, those of you who are on the www dot that are listening. I want to thank you for listening into the show. I hope that you found that informative. I hope that you um, have had a great two hours. We've had two powerful women come and talk. Um, do join me next week. We've got some more um, in store for you. And if you are a uh, an up and coming coach or you have a business or you want to you've got something to say you want to talk about something do get in touch with me um and we will bring you on the show so remember that um do remember that tomorrow i will be here at 9 a.m 9 a.m for morning inspiration giving you that super boost in the morning to start your day Tomorrow night, we have Conversations After Dark, the relationship show. So do remember to join us 10 till midnight. Yes, and on Thursday at 4 p.m., we've got Let's Cook. And we have Linda Wissart is back. And um, if you see on the thread, you will see that Lyndon is cooking, um, I think it's chicken wraps. So if you want to join in, please let me know because we will not be giving out the information on the day. So if you want to join in and cook on the show, you must let me know beforehand. Okay. so and also just to say there's a new and up and coming business, cooking business coming. Um, Tayers, Tasty Tayers. Tay, what's your thing called? Tayers, Tasty Tays. I think it is or taste taste. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> remote, okay, I'll get remote rolling it, but I can get my mouth around her food. Her food is exceptionally good. So Taya will be um, doing a live cooking on Let's Cook also, but that will probably be next week. So we want to support our young people. We want to support our, our, our community. So guys, um, those of you who heard Hannah, Support um, All Women's Network, support Dillis. Um, Dillis speaks on a Sunday at eight o'clock. Do support it's live here on Facebook and let us come together as a community and build ourselves strong. So, guys, we're coming down to the end of the show. Hasn't it been an amazing show tonight? Hasn't it been informative? And we've covered so much tonight. I just want to thank you for joining me. I also want to thank you for the support that you show the show. And also, I'm just going to say to you guys, 
get involved let us know what you are doing what you're doing in the community yes guys show so much love show the love on our facebook pretty up the screen that's what we're talking about so guys if there is something that you do that the community can can uh, benefit from <clears throat> please let us know we will give you a plug here right here on luton urban radio this is the pulse of the community and again, as I say, the love zone, the L zone, there has been a change, but something new, something fresh is coming in a week or so, and I will keep you updated. Yes, I will. So do stay tuned, stay locked in, and follow, share, like, and subscribe, all of them, and tell your family and friends all about what we are doing here for our community. But and on that note, I'm going to bid you a good night and say thank you for being here. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your well wishes as well. And I will be back here tomorrow night between 10 p.m. and midnight for After Dark Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. And we are talking relationships and we are talking about sex. OK. Ciao for now. Ciao. Have a great night. Have a great night. Have a great night. Those of you on the www. Thank you so much. Have a great night. God bless you. Stay safe. And always do your best. I'm out of here. My name's Yvonne Michelle. Ciao, ciao. Mwah. Ciao.